yeah welcome to the course the title of this course uh, is the contemporary issues in philosophy of mind and cognition i am ranjan kumar panda from the department of humanities and social sciences this course is also said uh, with professor rajkishor nath we teach uh, philosophy in humanities and uh, social sciences iit bombay today we will be uh, discussing uh, about uh, how we shall study this uh, course as you all know that philosophy of mind is uh, one of the important subject in, uh, in philosophy it is uh, important because it deals with the concept of uh, consciousness and uh, consciousness is uh, central to human life as a whole and uh, consciousness is uh, studied uh, by different disciplines for example people from the background of neuroscience cognitive psychology and uh, artificial intelligence are talking about consciousness extensively but their study of consciousness is uh, purely a scientific study and our approach will be philosophical rather than purely a scientific uh, one it is philosophical in the sense that philosophical enquiry goes back to the history uh, in which uh, you know this question is raised what is consciousness and how it is related to a uh, human life as uh, wittgenstein you uh, know one of the famous uh, of analytic thinker of 20th century pointed out that consciousness is life itself we want to look at how this question is related to life and how this question is delved you know uh, since the time memorial i say it uh, time memorial because uh, this question has been debated and discussed in upanishads this question has been debated and discussed in greek uh, uh, tradition now it is uh, uh, from that point of view rather we will be talking about consciousness and its a scientific position in the history of humanity on a consciousness as we all know that uh, is not a phenomenon which is existing uh, out there rather it is a phenomenon that has to be experienced that has to be felt that has to be realized etc etc now then if it is a phenomenon which is to be realized and then the question is how do we talk about it because i mean the very talk of uh, this con uh, this subject becomes a problematic one because it is not available there meaning thereby it is not available in the world but many naturalistic thinkers in the contemporary uh, time have uh, discussed that consciousness is a part of the world consciousness is related uh, to the world now again and again i will be talking about consciousness particularly because consciousness is uh, same as uh, mind we don't uh, discuss that consciousness is something different uh, from mind but if you look at upanishads how this uh, you know uh, then uh, particularly in brihadaranyaka upanishad uh, this uh, story of two birds are very important where consciousness is treated uh, as a phenomenon which is witnessing the mind it is witnessing the person where mind and persons are ajeev they are you know one and consciousness is something which is different which is independent of uh, the mind which is independent of the person now 
So, there is a distinction between mind and uh, consciousness. In, in the Greek tradition, you will also uh, find that consciousness has uh, been associated with, it is identified with the concept of soul. But in 21st century, when we talk about consciousness, we do not really talk about the concept of soul, because people feel that such a discussion take us into the realm of religious uh, studies. Philosophy as a discipline is not a religious study, it is not associated with religion, it is philosophy is in fact is one of the foundational disciplines, uh, its questions are very basic to the life, because I have mentioned earlier that consciousness is life itself. So, what kind of questions uh, philosophy puts forth uh, to all of us. So, for example, what is justice? Plato is uh, discussing this in Republic, what is good? In a similar way, uh, people are also discussing what is consciousness. So, is consciousness real? Is justice real? We all know that justice has to do uh, something with our real life. Similarly, consciousness has, has to do something with our real life, precisely because we all are conscious human beings and there are also conscious beings in the world. Now, how we are different from other beings? What is our identity as a human being and as one of the distinct unique being? in the reality. So, that is the topic which we will be discussing in this course. Now, consciousness is central to our studies. What are the issues that we will be uh, mainly concerned with? The issues here are the problem of dualism, the problem of reductionism, the problem of free will, the problem of personal identity. Etcetera. Now, dualism is a philosophical problem precisely because in the history of philosophy, people have been discussing about what is the reality, what is the reality as a whole and as such. Now, philosophers have again and again replied to this metaphysical questions that what is reality. Philosophical enquiry is precisely a metaphysical enquiry and metaphysics provides a foundation to philosophical enquiries. Now, what is reality? Is the reality uh, constituted of matter and some other material elements or is that a reality is constituted of something which is non-material, non-physical etcetera, etcetera. So, when we talk about non-material, non-physical, uh, we do refer to this notion of consciousness, that consciousness is not a physical phenomenon, rather it is a non-physical phenomenon. Now, this debate is very prominent in the philosophy of René Descartes. So, we will be discussing about this problem, addressing to the contemporary you know philosophers, how these contemporary philosophers like John Searle, uh, Daniel Dennett and Hilary Putnam, P. F. Strassen and many others have you know discussed this problem, whether philosophy really uh, resolve the issues is a matter of debate again we do discuss problems, we do debate on certain issues, but are these debate continuous? Uh, yes, they are continuous, they are continuous because we need to look at the significance of the debate, we need to understand what is the significance of this debate. So, philosophical uh, analysis, philosophical explanation do aspire for some kind of understanding. Philosophy does not 
explain away things like as it happened in the case of science. Science is mostly concerned with explanation, particularly uh, causal explanations and most of the philosophers of science who have been influenced by the scientific understanding of the reality of consciousness, they have tried to uh, know, uh, explain away the consciousness, the notion of consciousness from uh, the uh, reality. Now, so their whole approach is eliminative. Now, how science talks about this notion of consciousness as I mentioned earlier that philosophy as a discipline is not religious, philosophy is as a discipline is not scientific, but philosophy has its unique position. Philosophy as Wittgenstein once remarked that philosophy is neither above science nor below the science, it is uh, somewhere, somewhere in the sense that it has its unique uh, no, way of describing the reality. So, therefore, philosophical uh, explanations are uh, different, uh, they are unique because they generate understanding, they are, are not a discipline which will be talking about dogmas or the disciplines which are uh, nihilistic in approach. Philosophy is a rational enquiry and philosophical approach has been critical and so on and so forth. So, uh, as a rational enquiry, we would try to locate the issues, we will try to study uh, you know these issues of uh, reductionism, dualism, emergentism etcetera and try to put them in a perspective. So, from that point of view uh, philosophy is, uh, is a rational enquiry and it is critical because uh, we would examine these issues, we would examine rather says how Aristotle is talking about the concept of soul and how Descartes is being refuting such an enterprise and how Descartes is further you know refuted, refuted by the contemporary thinkers like Dennett and Sir. Our major thesis is uh, centered around this you know some of the important philosophers of mind, particularly John Searle, uh, Daniel Dennett, Jerry Fodor, Michael Teichmann and Paul Churchland and many others. Now, when we discuss uh, these philosophers, the main aim is to go back to uh, the history of the problem. Now, where this problem arised before and how these philosophers are addressing to the issues. Now, this is important uh, because most of the time we find as if philosophers are only you know trying to repeat certain issues, but this repetition is uh, certainly a philosophical enterprise. Other way of looking at is that they do not just simply disagree. Now, disagreements is something very special to philosophy as a discipline and philosophical enquiries uh, need not uh, have only one view. Philosophers do disagree and that disagreement causes pluralism. The disagreements enlighten us in many ways in the sense that uh, when two philosophers disagree, they disagree on their approach to the problem. So, for example, Searle and Dennett disagree with each other on, on this particular notion called consciousness or mind. Philosophers do disagree with each other. Now, their disagreement is based on their philosophical presuppositions. Say for instance, Searle disagrees with Descartes, when Descartes says mind and body are two independent substances, Searle disagrees with that, Searle says they are not two independent substances, rather mind and body are causally 
connected with each other. Of course, Searle agrees to this idea that mind cannot be reducible to the brain processes. And when he says that, he also disagrees with his contemporary philosophers of mind, for instance, Daniel Dennett. Daniel Dennett would rather feel comfortable with this idea that mind is identical with the brain and brain process is something uh, central to the discourse of the mind. Uh, so, there is nothing called mind as such, rather what is there is uh, only the brain processes. So, Dennett's position is quite different from the position that Sal will be taking. So, the contemporary debate would not only a debate about the existing philosophical theories about the concept of mind, rather the contemporary debate is centered around how this problem you know, can be traced from the history and we will try to show how our philosophical enquiry we do make progress, not by explaining the facts as it is done in the case of science, but by you know, initiating you know, bringing new facts and clarifying the concepts. So, clarity is the major issues here. The clarity is something that we would like to achieve when we talk about consciousness, because for many consciousness is a mystical entity, consciousness is a religious entity, but for a philosopher consciousness is not mystical, consciousness is not something which is uh, not there, we are, we are not nihilistic about consciousness. We do talk about consciousness and we will be talking about what is the ontological significance of consciousness. So, in this perspective our approach will be both contemporary and will also look at how the contemporary philosophers are initiating their debate and bringing new ideas to us that is our aim. When we say that philosophical knowledge or philosophical enquiry is a conceptual enquiry, we try to find out how certain concepts are difficult to understand, difficult to translate to you know, ordinary languages. So, um, probably the lack of translation, the lack of analysis you know, gives us this feeling that consciousness is uh, something mystical. So, in, in that context, who philosophy or philosophers bring new concepts into the discourse. So, that is uh, you know something uh, significant. So, concept displacement as uh, Professor Pradhan uh, used to discuss that concept displace displacement is something very significant to philosophical enquiry as disagreement is uh, something significant. Now, concept displacement is something significant. If Descartes is talking about substance dualism, then uh, Sarl is bringing that property dualism. So, people before uh, Sir uh, probably did not talk about property dualism as you know it has been talked about uh, contemporary philosophy of mind. So, people only thought that yes there is only one kind of a dualism that is called substance dualism and consciousness is, is not does not have any property or consciousness uh, is not a uh, property. So, concept of displacement is a is a part of the discourse of philosophy of mind. Now, uh, philosophy as a foundational discipline would uh, definitely initiate this question what is consciousness and how consciousness is related to uh, human life. So, in this context 
we will be pointing out some of the issues which uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, philosophy talks about uh, the reality and philosophical questions are fundamental questions. They are not general questions. Usually, general questions are the questions which deals with the uh, facts. Now, philosophical questions are uh, of course, uh, they deal with facts, but here the nature of fact probably is something different. So, for example, when I say there are 50 students in my class, I am just stating a fact that there are 50 students in my class. So, I am just describing uh, the fact, but when it comes to uh, the philosophy, we are concerned with the questions which are very fundamental like say for example, as I mentioned before that what is justice, what is consciousness, what is life, these are fundamental questions and philosophers are concerned with these questions. Now, when it comes to the philosophical debates, these questions are viewed from various perspectives, particularly the monist. So, for example, have tried to suggest a perspective where they think that only consciousness is real, only mind is real, but this could be also the other way. So, for example, a materialist monist, then I may say that the matter is only real and there is nothing called mind and if at all there is something called mind, then that has to be explained by nature of the material principles. Now, matter is fundamental and it is fundamental because it is ontologically real and that constitutes the entire reality. So, the foundational principles on which the reality is uh, constituted is matter. So, a materialist monist would uh, certainly eliminate the notion of consciousness from the discourse of consciousness, but this elimination is something significant. It does tell us something very unique about consciousness that is consciousness is a by product of certain function of the material bodies that are existing in reality. When I suggest that consciousness is by product, what I mean is this that consciousness is an epiphenomenon. Now, as an epiphenomenon it does not have any ontological status. So, to have ontological status of consciousness, either we talk about the monist who accept that consciousness is real and if I say both consciousness and matter or mind and the matter both are real, then I am no more a monist, I am a dualist. So, dualist do accept that there are two fundamental principles which help us explaining the nature of reality. Now, so, but dualists do have certain other philosophical problems. So, consciousness has to be or the mind has to be viewed from different perspectives. So, they have to, to show us, I mean these philosophers would and really enlighten us how these perspectives are important for achieving clarity as I mentioned that clarity is an important thing in philosophical enquiry and that has to be achieved because we do not want to just make a claim that consciousness is something mystical, consciousness is, is something spiritual. Just saying that it is mystical 
does not really make any sense to all of us, but since it is real it has to be viewed how it is real and therefore, we need to talk about different perspectives from which this particular concept is being viewed, this particular concept has been understood by this perspectives. So, from that point of view consciousness is a rational study in the domain of philosophy. So, philosophers do talk about consciousness and that talking is different from the scientific understanding of consciousness, but philosophers do share you know their understanding with the scientific understanding of consciousness. If you look at the present study in consciousness, most of the functionalist philosophers of mind do borrow their philosophical presuppositions from the achievement of science. So, it is not that there is no dialogue between philosophers and the scientist, it is not that philosophers study in their own way and that is totally you know uh, different from the way uh, scientists look at uh, the problem. So, that it, it is not that way. So, philosophers do talk about the issues, they sometimes are enlightened by the scientific achievements, but philosophical progress is different from the scientific uh, one. The progress in science is judged in terms of scientific productivity, okay. scientific uh, achievements, okay. but philosophers progress is judged from the point of view of clarity, from the point of view of lucidity, okay. how clarity one particular theory of mind, so biological naturalism brings clarity you know, uh, about the nature of consciousness. So, that is and how it refutes the substance dualism uh, that has been uh, debated in the history for a uh, for centuries. So, that kind of clarity we consider as a progress you know, in philosophy. So, this one thing I think we need to talk about.